Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to talk about concentrations of solutions. Specifically, we're going to talk about molarity. And molarity is one way to quantitatively measure the concentration of solutions. Today's essential question, how is molarity calculated? And as always, make sure you fully answer the essential question in your summary. We'll start with a, um, a quick overview of solutions. So a solution is a liquid mixture. It's made up of two things. It's made up of a solvent and a solute. Okay. The solvent is the primary component. It's normally a liquid because a solution is a liquid mixture. And the solute is the thing dissolved in the solvent. Okay, so, so for example, if I were to make sugar water where I add you know, sugar to water, stir it up for some reason. Water would be the solvent, and sugar is being dissolved in the water, so it is known as the solute. Concentration. The concentration of a solution is a measure of the amount of solute that is dissolved in a given quantity of solvent. Okay. So we, we could um, talk about concentration um, qualitatively by using terms like dilute and concentrated. So a dilute solution is one that contains only a low concentration of solute. So if I had a cup of water and only put a little bit of sugar in it, that would be a dilute solution of sugar water. A concentrated solution contains a high concentration of solute. All right, so if I took that same cup of water, put, put a whole bunch of sugar in it, I would have a concentrated solution. Okay, so um, we just talked about how to qualitatively describe a concentration using descriptive words like dilute and concentrated. Um, but that doesn't really tell you how much sugar is in the water. A dilute solution means not so much, and a concentrated solution means a lot. But that's, you know, relative. All right, so another way to express concentration is using something called molarity. Molarity expresses concentration quantitatively with numbers. So instead of saying it's a dilute solution, I could say it's a 0.01 molar. That gives people an idea, or exactly actually, how much sugar is in that water. Okay. So the definition, definition of molarity is it's the number of moles of a solute dissolved per liter of solution. Okay. And so basically, a molarity is a numerical value showing how much stuff, how much solute, is dissolved in the liquid. Okay. So it's not, not too big of a deal. Here comes the math part. So to determine molarity, we're going to use the equality, equality. Molarity, also capital M, equals moles of solute over liters of solution. Okay? Important. Um, you are more than welcome to write that on your unit conversion table. The units for molarity are either capital M or mole per liter. Um, they, they mean the same thing. Capital M means mole per liter. Mole per liter equal means capital M. Okay. When you're writing an answer, you can use either capital M or mole per liter. This is really important. But when solving a problem, use mole per liter. So I guess we, a good way to think about this is that the capital M is for answers. And mole per liter is for solving problems. Okay? Really important. It'll make the problems much more difficult if you forget this. Okay? When solving problems, use mole per liter. Okay? Now we just need to try this. Okay. So our practice problem. A chemist wants to make 7.5 liters of a 6 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. NaOH. How many moles of NaOH will the chemist need to make this solution? All right, remember we're using the formula molarity equals mole over liter. Okay, and the way I do this is I make a list of all the possible 
variables. We have molarity, we have moles, and we have liters. And then I read through the story. A chemist wants to make 7.5 liters. Well, that's liters. Of a 6 molar solution. That goes with the capital M, 6M. But remember, we're solving a problem right now, so we're going to do this as 6 mole over liters. Um, how many moles? That's our X, right? There you go. Now we just take that information and plug it into our formula. So we're going to have capital M, which is 6 mole per liter equals mole over liter, X over 7.50 liter. Okay. Now to solve a problem where you have two fractions with an equal sign in between is that we cross multiply. Right? So we're going to multiply those guys. So we'll have 6 mole times 7.50 liters equals, and we're going to multiply these guys, x liters. All right, when, when I multiply, please do this with me, make sure I did it right. I got 45 mole liters equals x liters. Now we need to solve for x, and so what we'll do is divide both sides by liters, and we end up with 45 moles. x equals 45 moles. Um, last step is to check sig figs. So if we go back to our list here, we have one sig fig and three sig figs, so we're going to have one sig fig, which means we're only going to keep the four. So 5 is, 5 or bigger, so we're going to round up to 5, and then because we're dropping a number, the 5, before a decimal, we need to add a placeholder. So our final answer is going to be 50 moles. Okay. Let's try one more. Okay. So again, we have the same formula. Molarity equals mole over liter. Let's make a list of our variables. Mol molarity equals, mol equals, liter equals. And we start reading the story. What is the molarity? What is the molarity is going to be our X, molarity is capital M, of a solution pre prepared by dissolving 37.94 grams, hmm, so let's move ahead from there, of potassium hydroxide in some water and then diluting the solution to a volume of 5 liters. Okay, well I got the 5 liters down. But here's a problem. I don't see anywhere in the story where it tells me moles. We already have the X for molarity, but it does give me grams. So what do you do? Well, we could convert 37.94 grams potassium hydroxide, and what do we want that to be? We want it to be moles. Okay, this is where we set up our grid, 37.94 grams KOH over 1, and we're going to use the equality 1 mole KOH equals the molar mass of KOH, which we get off the periodic table. So we're going to add the molar mass of one potassium, one oxygen, and one hydrogen. And I got 56.11 grams KOH. Then we put that stuff into our grid, setting it up so that our units cancel out. So we have 56.11 grams KOH on the bottom, and one mole on the top, and we make sure our units cancel out, and they do. From here, we multiply across the top, bottom, and divide, and that gave me 0 0.67617 and so forth. We're going to have four sig figs, so our final answer will be 0 0.6762 mole. So 
we'll put that in our list. All right, let me get rid of our mole conversion here since we now have the answer. So now that we've done all that work, we can now start the problem, which is we're going to plug in this information into this guy here. All right, so we're going to have mol uh, molarity equals mole over liters. So we're going to have molarity, which is x this time equals 0 0.6762 mole divided by 5 liters. This time we don't have to cross multiply, we're just going to divide. So when we do that, I got 0 0.13524 mole over liters. Um, one sig fig, so we're going to have 0 0.1 mole over liters, or we could also write that as 0 0.1 liters. Either one. Okay, that's it for today. Have a good one.